Right, so here we are back talking about taking complex or taking roots of complex numbers in polar form, and we do that using de Moivre's theorem. And here, the first thing that you're seeing in this blue box is that our complex number is being represented by this letter W, or maybe that's a lowercase omega. I don't know. I can never tell the difference. And the reason that we're doing that is because we're going to express our solutions, and yes, that's plural. We're going to express our solutions using the letter Z to represent our complex number solutions in polar form. And those Z values will have subscripts. So we're going to take, if we took the fifth root, for example, we would have subscripts 0 through 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that makes five roots. So if we're taking a fifth root, we're going to get five roots. And it's typical to number them 0 through 4. And you'll see why that's helpful in a minute. This is sort of the framework that we want to use right here for calculating those, uh, whether you're working with radians or degrees. And I don't really even want to talk about it anymore because it's so much easier to just see it in motion. So let's work this example problem to give you at least one example of how to take an nth root of a complex number in polar form. Our W value is, or our initial complex number is 16 cosine 120 degrees plus I sine 120 degrees. And we're going to find all of the complex fourth roots. How many fourth roots will there be? There will be four of them. So let's give this a shot. Uh, we have to, so actually just next to me, like right, yeah, right there. The, uh, oh, actually, we're in degrees, so we're going to use this one down here. We still need to take the nth root of r. So let's start out with that. The nth root of r is equal to the, in this problem, it's the fourth root of 16, which is equal to 2. All right, so we're making good progress so far. We know what the coefficient is on all of these results. And then we have the cosine of theta I'm just writing this out to help me sort of get oriented. Uh, there's going to be a theta plus 2 pi k over n. Now our k values, as you can see just below me here, our k values are going to scroll through these numbers, 0 through n minus 1. We're working on fourth root, so our k values will be 0, 1, 2, and 3. So Right here, that's what that k value is. The n, we're taking fourth roots, so n is going to equal 4. And we already know what theta is. Uh, so let me plug those in. So theta is 120 degrees plus, now oh, I wrote 2 pi k, and I should have written 2 times, or I should have written 360 degrees times k because we're working in degrees. 360k, little degree mark there, good, okay. So 360k, and then we have to divide that by our n value, which consistently throughout this problem is going to be 4. You'll see in a second why it is I'm taking the time to do this, but I, I promise, from a lot of experience having done problems like these, because I've been teaching this stuff for more than a handful of years already, um, this is good preliminary work to do. It's going to save you some time later. Otherwise, you would have to do this exact process over and over four times. So let's just do it once here. I'm going to simplify this fraction. And to simplify, I need to distribute my denominator. So the 120 divided by 4 is equal to 30 degrees. Plus the 360 is also divisible by 4 and makes 90 plus k, it's really 90 degrees plus k, or sorry, times k. So 30 plus 90k. That's how we're going to march through and calculate these theta values that will be part of our four answers. All right, let me show you. z sub 0 is going to be our first answer. It's equal to the nth root of r times, I'm only going to write this out once, 
times the cosine of, we could make this a square bracket, the cosine of 120 degrees plus 360 degrees times our k value, which this time is zero. For our next solution, the k value will be one. For the one after that, it'll be a two, and then for the last one, it'll be a three. But initially, we're using a k value of zero divided by our n value of four. Plus i times the sine of all of that same stuff. Uh, now, I meant to put that in a more generic form, so I'm actually going to go back, not far, but at the left hand end of that equation where I wrote n times the square root of r, let's replace that with the fourth root of 16. Alright, so this is how we are calculating z sub 0, our first solution, and now we have to simplify. Well, 120 degrees plus what's really is zero degrees makes 120, and 120 divided by four is equal to 30. And we need to take the fourth root of 16, so this is equal to two times the cosine of 30 degrees plus i times the sine of 30 degrees. And that's our first solution, z sub zero. In order to calculate z sub 1, this time I'm going to immediately use the fact that the fourth root of 16 is equal to 2. And of course, this is when the iPad wants to be on the blink. So we have to unplug and replug, and I have no idea why that works, but it seems to work every time, thankfully. Cosine of, now look at what I recommended we use, 30 plus 90k. In the first uh, solution where we had a, an answer of 30 degrees as the angle measure, that's 30 plus 90 times zero. Now we're gonna use 30 plus 90 times one. plus i times the sine of, again, 30 plus 90 times our k value of 1. Isn't writing 30 plus 90 times a number so much nicer? Look, I'm writing this instead of this. I like my way better, right? So again, nice to do this preliminary work so that then we can continue with this format instead of having to write this over and over again. Okay, so let's clean this one up. We've got 2 times the cosine of 120 degrees plus i times the sine of 120 degrees. Is that too many parentheses? Yes. Somewhere... Oh no, that's correct. These are wrapped around the 120. It was because my one looked like a parenthesis also. There we go. Okay, that's our second solution. Our third solution is going to have the same R value, but the angle measure is going to be increased by another 90. We started with zero 90s, then here we had one 90, here we're going to have two 90s that get added on to the 30. Okay, so we're uh, repeatedly adding a, an additional 90 degrees. So I've got two times the cosine, 120 plus 90. If you wanna write that out, write it out. If you wanna write it as 30 plus 90 times two, I think that's a great idea. I'm not gonna write it out because I already know that process. But if you wanna write it out, it's a great idea. Uh, so I'm adding another 90 degrees, so that makes 210 degrees plus i times the sine of 210 degrees. 
And that's it, that's my third solution, right? So see how the recognizing the pattern helps to expedite the process? And then finally, I'm gonna add another 90 degrees. You can already tell that the angle measure is gonna be 300. And I want to write this as fast as possible. I wanna be as lazy as possible on this one. I'm gonna write it as two cis 300 degrees. If you're one of my students and you take a test and you have to find, you know, if you have to do this problem as a free response question, would I really do that to you? I'm going to leave you to answer that question. I think you know what the answer is. Uh, if you're going to represent your final answers using cis notation, the rest of your work better be very well organized. You should demonstrate to me at least once that you actually know what you're doing. So, you know, so maybe you want to do, honestly, as long as you show me this work up here at the top, and then you go right into cis notation, that's fine. If you want to do the work that's at the top of the screen and then show me, uh, you know, this one time so that it's in conjunction with that and then you just want to go um, and not show me any arithmetic after that and just write down final answers, that's fine too. But my students need to give me some indication that they know what they're doing on a problem like this before they just uh, plow through in cis notation. I would also like you to have correct answers, okay? I want the R value and those theta values to be correct. So if you can refine this process so that you can just uh, sort of crank through cis notation, that would be great. Easier for me to grade, really. But again, the presentation, it's gotta look really good and I want right answers, okay? Thank you so much for joining me in this four segment conversation about complex numbers in polar form and some of the different operations that we perform on them as well as how we plot them on the complex coordinate plane. I will see you next time. Thanks again.